Hello, everyone. It is great to be here this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Elizabeth Adeyemo, and I'm representing Inclusio. We are delighted to co be collaborating with Women Who Code to really have this event. Um, with me today from Inclusio is Gabby Lubambo and Arthur Lubambo. They're going to be taking us through this session. Um, for myself, I am a research, I started as a research and content graduate at Inclusio. Uh, in August of 2001, I worked in the people science department for nine months, and then I navigated and moved into the marketing world that I'm in right now. And my day to day really revolves around content creating, content development, social media, events, podcasting, looking at blogs. And we're really just at a really exciting stage at Inclusio. Now, what is Inclusio for people that don't know? We are, we are a tech diversity and inclusion tech company and um, we use technology psychology and artificial intelligence to help companies shift their workplace culture and um, and really what that looks like is we help them kind of under we help them understand the diversity of their people we have over a hundred um, deep demographic data points and then the inclusion part which focuses on culture and like I said shifting culture and um, that has uh, the psychology behind that and um, and then we have knowledge learning within that so there are like layers to the product and our platform and I'm really excited to be here today to have a conversation with you all about where you're at workplace culture Gabby's going to be sharing her experience um, Arthur is going to be taking us through what remote working is like and working with people from all over the world. We know that we are really going towards that future, or I should say that future is here right now. And it's up to us to equip ourselves with the tools, with the knowledge, with the information that we need to be able to have workplaces where everyone is valued, respected, and they are included, truly included. And what we do at Inclusio is we help you prove it. We help you demonstrate through data, through evidence-based uh, approach that you are, you, your DNI strategy is having an impact, that you are um, having progress. Um, and so I'm, again, we are gonna have a conversation here. I know we have the whole evening planned out and Gabby will be taking us through and Arthur will be taking us through, but I would also appreciate if you can feed us with your questions, you can, feed us with your thoughts, and we would like to kind of communicate and engage with you in that way. So thank you very much. I'm passing it on right now to Gabby. Gabby, you can have the floor. Hi. Hello, everyone. Good night. Uh, good evening. <laughs> so I'm delighted to be here tonight. So can I just say something there? <laughs> I was meant to do the announcements. Before the women who code official now. Oh, you, okay. you, you first. Sorry, yeah. sorry about that. Sorry. It's just uh, no, no, no. That's I, 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 yeah. No, Go ahead. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Is that okay, Elizabeth? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Vicky. Yeah. Take the floor. Yeah. So if uh, so, I'm just gonna um, share my slides there. Just it's gonna be very quick. Um, bear me a second and um, share. Can people see that? Yeah. Hope so. Yeah. Okay, cool stuff. So, um, so uh, uh, as what Liz said, welcome to every, um, to Women Who Code Dublin um, collaboration with Inclusio. My name is Vicky. I'm on the Women Who Code Dublin team. Um, so, if I can just uh, move on a bit. So, I'm just gonna. Uh, so, our mission is to empower diverse women to excel in technology careers and our vision is a tech industry where diverse women and historically included uh, excluded uh, people thrive at every level and we do have four values so uh, from focus on mission so I always remember why we're here and who we're here for and uh, design for inclusion so we're making space and embody a culture of belonging and we advocate for change, so we have live leadership and we champion each other as well. Uh, and as a community, we are powerful. And of course, journey forward where we recharge and celebrate those wins and break the barriers. Uh, so we have uh, um, uh, 320,000 members um, in 147 countries. As you can see, Ireland is in there as well. Um, they've been, uh, they uh, started off in um, 
it began in 2011 so uh in a small community group in san francisco and um, they soon grew very fast and women who code dublin um itself has uh over 2000 members subscribed on our meetup page so thank you everyone um so this is our Dublin team. Um, There's Christina, Irene, Shaki, uh, myself, and Amy Louise. So Christina, Irene, Shaki, myself are directors of the Dublin team, and Amy Louise are, is heading up comms. And um, so, so, uh, so if you're interested, and we do have a few uh, interested people who've submitted uh, to, to volunteer for a team as well. So we're working on that in the background, but anyone is interested in joining us, uh, you can submit uh, an email to uh, dublinwomenincode.com or the main Women in Code site. Uh, they, they, yeah, you can, there's actually instructions if you want to join a chapter or you want to start your own. Uh, so a little bit uh, of a small announcement before, well, it was a big announcement before we move on, announcement of announcements before we move on. So Christina, Irene, and myself will like, um, are actually stepping down as directors this year. Um, uh, uh, but we would like to say thank you to all the members for making events so great over the years. Um, we've been on a uh, Dublin team for quite a number of years and would love to see um, newer faces to come on board and help uh, promote women to code and do amazing, more amazing events um, from uh, uh, especially from next year onwards and support Shaki and Amy Louise as well. So we wish Shaki, Amy Louise and all the volunteers all the best going forward. And of course, you won't see the last of me. I'll be attending the events, which is kind of uh, more relaxing for me, I suppose. <laughs> so, if so, we won't see the last of me, um, and I'll I'll keep on promoting Women to Code as well. So, one thing to note: we do have a code of conduct, and you'll see the full uh, uh, code of conduct on womenwhocode.com. And if there is something that you wish to um, uh, submit, if there was an uh, uh, incident, uh, you can uh, contact me directly or uh, submit it, uh, an incident response to womenicode.com uh, or email the global uh, ad uh, womenicode uh, email address at contact at womenicode.com. Um, so you met Elizabeth, our MC this evening, and. Our speakers, which you can see there, Gabriella and Arthur and Gabriella will be coming back again. <laughs> um, and if you want to learn more about events, so Women Code um, have remote events uh, for, for the unforeseeable future. So check, you can sign up and get notified of all the various events that are happening all around the world. And of course, stay connected. We're on Twitter at, at www.codedublin and you can email us at Dublin uh, women uh, for any inquiries. So I will hand you back to Elizabeth and or Gabriella since we did that part already. <laughs> and I will unshare and um, I will let uh, Gabriella uh, give her talk. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for all the great work you have been doing all this time, uh, Vicky. It's brilliant. Uh, before I start, I, I need to share something with you because I think it's quite interesting. I was looking at my personal email today and then I saw one event from Woman Who Code because I was used to attend these events. <laughs> so I, I opened because I thought, oh, something coming on. When I opened, I, oh, I'm speaking at this event. So it was very, I was telling Art, I was like, oh, I think this is maybe like one of my success goals in life, something that I... I never thought could happen and then i'm here today so just want to share because i thought it was quite funny in fairness <laughs> so first of all thank you very much for attending thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk a little bit about what we do at Inclusu, what we do in our roles and also share a little bit of our experience we are all here learning so it's a journey in fairness we are not like expert in anything we are learning together we want to learn more and more and more so feel free to make inputs to ask questions to to be part of this i think that's the the opportunity that's a safe space that we want to to build together okay so can i share my screen to start let me you can let me know if it's working.
Is it working? Yes. yes, it is. Okay, so I'm here this evening to talk a little bit about accessibility in UX design. Uh, as Vic and Elizabeth, they mentioned, I'm Gabriela Lubambu. I'm head, let me just, <laughs> I'm head of UX, UI design at Inclusio. So I will talk yeah, at Inclusio, not Inclusio. <laughs> so I, I will talk a little bit about myself first. So my pronouns are she, her. I'm an immigrant, a mother of a little boy called Noah, who is turning two in February. Uh, I came from a non-conventional family as my mom passed away when I was six and I was raised by a single dad. So I think since always my life was surrounded by diverse. So what things that I, I look at, at myself and I saw myself different from others. And it always kind of made me a little bit impressed of how people are so different and how personal experience uh, are always there. So I think that was always with me since a child. Uh, talking a little bit about my prof professional background, I have a background in engineer, designer, HR management. <laughs> I think I like a little bit of everything. I'm an avd, re AVD reader and I love people, really. Only a little bit more than I love dogs. <laughs> I'm truly passionate about making the world a better place. And I do understand that this come from the inside out. Uh, as I mentioned before, at Inclusio, I'm head of UX UI design, and I'm currently using my skills to lead a team that builds inclusive designs for a product whose main goal is giving people an opportunity to have their voice heard inside the workplace. All these things I'm telling about you are what make me a unique and interesting human being. Delighted to be here. So I will start properly <laughs> the conversation. So uh, we are here today to talk about accessibility in UX design and how can we make our designs more accessible? Uh, I put here some data. Uh, the World Health Organization estimates about 15% of the world's population live with a disability. That means over 1 billion people have some sort of disability in the world. 1 billion is nearly one in every eight people. And do you know that only one in two people with disabilities can afford health health care, including rehabilitation services and everything? And only one in ten people has access to life changing assistive technology. Do you know that? I think this data is quite in impressive. Uh, so, what this data has to do with? UX design. Okay, so when we think accessible, we are empowering entire groups of people. So what it means is not only good for your business, because <laughs> 1 billion people more that could be using your product now <laughs> as a user. So it's good for your business. But it's also the human thing to do, you know, like empathy <laughs> so we have the ability to transform disabilities in a whole new world of possibilities including people and making people uh, part of the world so trying to break the barriers and achieving much more people one billion this for me it's like very impressive so there are a few Mates, I don't know if it's mates. Is it mates or mates? Uh, I think so. Mates <laughs> involved in inclusive design. Some of the mates I I pointed here. Uh, one that it benefits only those with permanent disabilities, but it actually helps people with temporary or situational disabilities too. Uh, it exclusively benefits people with disabilities. 
While the truth is that eliminating barriers, as I said, and difficulties between your product and the user will result in better overall usability. And third, it's that discourage or make innovation difficult. But what accessibility really does, it's like challenge your creativity and push you as a designer to do better. And some of the obvious benefits of an inclusive design I pointed here as force of all, better overall usability. As I said, once the design is done for all, even who has no disability will have a better and clear experience. Second, reach a larger audience. On top of including more people and allowing them to have as good experience as anybody else, it's good for your business. So you will potentially have a larger group of users to your product. And greater prominence on search engines, SEO. When you have accessible designs features, your product is much more likely to be higher on search engines. Once again, it's good for your business. So uh, I, I, can, I put some uh, areas that I think like as a UX designer, we should be looking at least. In, and these main areas are visual disability, cognitive disability, motor disability, and hearing disability. There are not only these ones, I'm putting as a UX designer the main ones that I think I should mention here today. So, uh, on visual disability, I think it's always good to mention what it seems the obvious color. Use color to highlight or complement what's already visible. Do not rely on color alone to convey information. But okay, what do you mean, Gabi? So that's, I put an example here. So this is how a colorblind person would see this screen. And only, and if you can take a look, the person would only be able to recognize one field with arrow. This is how the screen was designed. So you can note that how the, these three force fields rely only on the red colors to show the arrow. So the person would not be able to understand what it's like, what it's there only in one of the fields. So do you understand why, why, what I said? If you want, I can go back. So highlight or complement what it's already visible and do not rely on color alone to convey information. In this case, here we have an icon and the color that helps you to understand where is the problem. But in these fields, we don't really have it. So it makes very hard for the user with some sort of visual impairment, like color blindness, to understand what is the problem. Okay. Um, for contrast, as imaginable, uh, if the background and the writing does not have enough contrast, the text won't be readable. So uh, we got to keep in mind people with visual impairment from a light disability to a high, higher one. After I can share these this slides with you as for you to have a more clear guideline, you say, but uh, contrast ratio between text and a text background should be at least 4.5 to 1. If your font is at least 24 pixels or 19 pixels bold, the minimum drops to 3 to 1. Okay. Uh, a few things more in visual disability. Charts cannot be read by screen readers. A good design has the charts included on the alt text, otherwise the user could miss valuable information. Uh, remember to alt text all your image. And when I say all your image, I'm, I mean all your significant image. Anything that is not relevant to the user, like decorative image, don't need to be included on the alt text. And uh, ensure that the, you use the 
CSS to make your header tags consistent through the site. Try not to skip from one heading level to the next one, for example, like H1 to H4, Raider H1 to H2, H, H, H1 to H2. And this can confuse the screen reader software and consequently the user. And any font size that is smaller than 12, it's like way too small. Any text that is smaller than that will make it hard for any user to read it to read. So not only for people with visual impairments, but for anyone. Um, and also, I think something that we don't mention, but like things very small is not aesthetic pleasing. So I think, as, as I said before, when we are making design more accessible, we are doing a better work for everyone. It's not only for people with disability. And also, um, when we design forms, designers are getting into the habit of using placeholders only. Placeholders cannot be read by screen readers, so your user won't know what to do with that form. Use labels and clear instructions for form fields to be filled. So I will show you what it means, because I know this part of the form is a little bit, can, can be a little bit hard to understand if I don't show. But it's sometimes I, I'm seeing all the time when I, I'm doing my, my own search online and I see people going and uh, doing this new uh, kind of designs with, oh, we are doing like more modern design. And sometimes I feel a little bit scared, to be honest, because I feel that people are getting into a mode to try having like less, less, less. But then I'm thinking, okay, so I, I will show a case here, an example that will, will help you to understand. Uh, this is the same. So I will jump to cognitive diversity, but I will show this case that it's not only for cognitive diversity, but uh, as well for the for people with visual impairment. And like even uh, I don't have any cognitive, I'm not cognitive diverse, but I find myself sometimes having trouble when I'm feeling form, when I'm not, when I'm too tired or something. So sometimes I'm trying to, to fill the form and I don't remember, as soon as I start typing, I don't remember what it was about. So users with cognitive disabilities may have difficult finding and interacting with fields without common visual cues such as border and labels. So here I have two, example, two examples. Placeholder is going to disappear once the user clicks inside of the box. I'm sure everyone here already had this, this opportunity to deal with some interact to interact with some of these these designs. So and but this is not friendly. And it's not friendly for screen readers either, as I mentioned before. So in this second example, you can see it's uh, the labels are clear. So we have email address. As soon as I start typing, I still know what I'm typing about, what I'm doing. And why in this first one, it's not how it happens. So moving forward. Still on the cognitive disability, uh, it's important to mention that to mention that animations and automatic played videos can cause distress and or distract a user with cognitive disability. It's important that the animation can be stopped if the user requires. And and the video, if you, you want to present, there is no problem, you can you can present a video, but it's important that you remember to not make it playing automatically. The the user should be able to go and click and play whenever they feel it's right to do. And readable content, the simpler the language, the easier it will be to read for learning impaired users. So sometimes we try to, to use big words for things, <laughs> but I think uh, the bigger the big, the, like if you we use very hard language, it will make more hard for people to to understand, and the user can can have like troubles navigating 
with your like on your website on your design on your any interaction you are trying to to make uh, and one that it's very interesting and very important it's stay very aware i think like we have loads of click here and but this is not really self-explanatory so there is a strategy with links that it's try and explain what that link is for before placing it on your text so for example here i put an example use descriptive read more about the accessibility guidelines at so i'm explaining what they will find and then they have the clear link explaining that like an explicit descriptive link for them to go through so let me go to next now moving on to motor disabilities we got to include our user that won't be able to interact with our design the same way for example i do they might not be able to use both hands or either of them if you use hovering over a card an icon or a text as a way of showing that this is an actionable item you will be most definitely depriving users that don't use mouse as an interaction tool they won't see that it was an action an actionable item so it's extremely important that we keep this in mind and so most likely your motor disability user will interact with your design via keyboard so the focus indicator job is to indicate what elements the user is currently dealing with whether it's a button or a block of text so i put here an example where we can see the blue bar as a fox indication for keyboard fox so we can clearly there is the shop and we know where the in which tab in which button we are uh, on this example we can see that the bbc website went with a blue tick bar as the focus indicator the way the user using tab key knows he is on shop button And when we get to hearing impairments, designers want to make sure that any sound interaction you apply on your design has a second substitute option. So make sure, <clears throat> sorry, make sure you have transcript, transcript for audios and that you have captions or even SL interpreter screen on videos. That way your content will reach those with like different levels of hearing disabilities. So uh, the time is not uh, long, so I try to, to, to do it in a small, like in a short presentation. And then I, I was thinking how people can really get into, into this. So I said, okay, let me summarize some do's and don'ts for people to have it in mind always and try to, to have it like as their mantra <laughs> while designing. So the do's, uh, Descriptive links, always, caption videos and audios, alt text for non-text content, have a good focus indication, use clear labels on forms. And the don'ts, color as your only way to highlight content, use placeholders in forms, use low contrast, use jargon or complex language use font size is smaller than 12. so these are the don'ts okay i think if you from the whole presentation if you take these two screens and you put <laughs> with you you hold it in your hands i think you start understand a little bit and make your work your day-to-day -day life a little bit more inclusive for people around you so uh, i want to tell you that accessibility is not a field a feature shouldn't be couldn't be cannot be <laughs> make it easy to see accommodating visual needs make it easy to understand accommodating cognitive needs make it easy to interact accommodating motor needs make it easy to hear accommodating hearing needs 
Thank you very much. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too fast. So let me stop my screen for a minute to look at yours. So how can I say? Stop. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I try to put like in a small presentation some things that I'm learning from like a few years now. So, but if you have any questions or if you want to, to have access to more of the, the documents that I have, some of the guidelines we are creating inside of the team to share with our, like, our organization and with anyone else would be very appreciated. I think as many people engaged in making the designs more accessible, it's better. So thank you very much. I think... Arthur, I don't know if it's Arthur now, so I leave it <laughs> with so Elizabeth. Much. Thank you so much, Gabby. That was really insightful. I really uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. I was thinking about my own day to day and when I have to like post things and like, I was like, okay, am I describing well enough before I share a link? If I say, just click here to register, is that enough or do I need to like explain more? Um as we see, these are the quote, we call them little things, but they have such an impact because they make someone else's life easier. So they're not little things. If, you know, we can't measure the impact, you know. They are so not it's just little things at all. Yeah. And then when we say, sorry, Elizabeth, to interrupt you, it's just because when we start this conversation, I just cannot stop. <laughs> but I think it's, it's very important that we understand that one as i said in the beginning of my presentation it's one billion of people like yeah it's it's huge so i don't know how we are not or maybe we are we are having this conversation so we have to be thinking about it this one billion of people you know and it's not only that so i will leave Arthur. i'm sorry <laughs> to take the time but thank you very much okay thank you gabby Arthur, you can have the floor. So I'm gonna, uh, hi, hello everyone. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, I'm here just beside Gabby. So I'm going to use her, her audio, that's better than my, my computer. Should so. I share this thing? Yes, you can share, you can share. So first of all, I'd like to, to, to thank you. Thank you, Vicky, for the invite uh, uh, and like uh, congratulations for the whole journey that you have so far. Like it's a brilliant, brilliant, impactful. Can I book. just jump in there? I I'm seeing Gabriela's face and not your face <laughs> because it's her computer. Maybe you want to swap seats let's, because I'm not recording it. It probably makes more sense if people get very confused. Sure. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so thank you. Great. So, uh, yeah. So, like, I, I uh, like, I would like to 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 say thank you for all all, all the contribution. Like, uh, it's a brilliant work uh, that you have been done, and uh, I'm glad to be here to to like to share a little bit about about some some experience and to learn also with all of you. It's so good. It's so good to to. It's always interesting topics uh, involved in these these kinds of events. Uh, yeah, so let's start. So today I'm here to talk a little uh, about the like working with a remote and multinational team. Uh, so I like just a quick introduction of myself. Like I, I'm director of engineering and co-founder uh, of Inclusio. Uh, I'm Brazilian, that of a little boy. I love maps and music and technology and data and it's it's so it's so nice to see uh I'm I'm really when I see Gabby like look how how we are privileged today like to have uh, in a in a time where we have uh, uh technologies that we can have live live transcriptions about what we are saying like that's brilliant and I love to study more about it and to build Build more technology to 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 help the the society. So it's so it's so beautiful to to see all of this happening and to be live and seeing that happen right now. So for the, I like to to make a reflection. Um, what those things have in common? We have a 
computer, we have a plane, we have a caravel, a letter, a mobile. What do you think that they, they might they might have in common? If if you see all of them, they are like tools or technologies that that make our society more connected. All of them, they are used as a um, like. They are used for exchanging goods, information, knowledge, culture, or transport people. And all of these things make the world more, more connected and like they, it, it reduces the distance between all of us. Uh, just to put something in, like, uh, in a more historical timeline, this is not like, this is absolutely not a linear pace. Of, of increasing on that connections. Like we will in like 1500, we have caravels, we like to travel from one continent to another, take months to, to go like years later, we have like a train, steam train. They, they have fabulous 40 kilometers per hour that today sounds, sounds silly, but like, look, imagine like how, what are the options be, before that? And then they have a, a brilliant machine that do that. Then 1900s cars, like in the beginning, like 50, 54 kilometers per hour, like, and it's massive, quick, and like it, it shorts also the distance between cities. Then when we go to, to a, like a closer time to us, like 1990, like the beginning of the internet, they have extremely powerful, 64 kbits, kbits uh, per second of, of, of bandwidth. And it make, even on that time, it make a revolution. Uh, 2000, 2000 years, we have mobile internet. Actually, we didn't need to be like attached to a, a wire uh, or we have a device to that to, to be able to, to exchange information uh, around devices, around people, around uh, continents so like it's the fabulous space of speed in terms of information uh transportation and 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 the time was reduced a lot so the things that we do here today impact someone in the other side of the world immediately it, it's like it's something that that comes to, to stay and like it do not it do not change at all like it do not it do not be reduced so the world is more connected than ever uh just to have some thoughts around it like we have uh here's the world immigration statistics uh between like uh, 19, 1960 and 2022 if you see like the migrant population in the world in the world like it's increasing like from something around there between uh 60 70 thousand oh sorry sorry 60 70 million growing like slightly the, the absolute number of population migrant until reach uh, a break changing like a uh, changing between uh 1985 to 1990 that is a big a big shift then it goes also in in, in, a, in a line growing until 2015 that the, the final data point that they, they have there uh on this graph that is like is reaching nearly 250 millions of, of of migrants of people so that's a massive like the world is really being more connected the percentage of if you see in percentage in the relative numbers you you see that in even in even different perspective look look how how they they grow in like in a much, much fast pace so to, until now that we have above 3.3 percent of the total population as as an immigrant so it's brilliant to see that um in so what what came from the whole history on that like we have we have uh, develop, developed technologies we have developed way of lives professional jobs that we never had before 
because we are more more connected so we if you're thinking about uh like in covid times like we never in the history we had the whole science uh community scientific community working the same problem like in a so it's like uh, in a so synchronized synchronized way to develop some vaccine for covid for instance to understand better what what is the virus how the viral virus works imagine how people from different countries they share information in like very quickly we in, in, in a matter of weeks we had the the like generic genetic material of, of the virus there available for for many researchers around the world like that's that's beautiful that's impressive and so that's something that 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 came so multinational teams and remote work it's something that became mainly after covid after the acceleration the the organizations realized that the borders uh, of of the work is, is is nothing like we can we can do have collaboration and on inclusion in particular uh we have like challenging times like we we are like uh spun out from the university and and we were in the middle started the the the, the, in the middle of the pandemic and it was interesting to see that we built ourselves like a, a culture that we work at the source well with a distributed and and multinational team since since the beginning so the challenges that we face like in daily lives like i will explain some personal experience like it's time zone time zones so it's really tricky to, to arrange meetings like when we have like a, a one one person in the team in india another in poland and in, in ireland and brazil like so we we accommodate and we accommodate these schedules to to make it happen to to organize the work the the amount of work that we do like i think is, is quite important like so we we like we had some challenge and we we accommodate to have more i think uh decisions document and have it written uh, some decisions, some material to support each other in the development of the work. So it it goes to it helps a lot that people understand. Wake up in the morning, understand what what they need to do and what what was the status from the previous person in the previous day. The colleague is in the team, so it's 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 quite quite important to have it there. The other thing is build connections. Like uh, sometimes I I like now that we like everyone passed lockdowns it, it's it's easy to understand that like work remotely at home might be a little lonely you might have that feeling so it's important it's quite important you build the connections with the team so it's important you have um like how can i say casual meetings uh, casual conversations with the colleagues because it's it's not good for the for like the mental health you just go sit in the computer and work 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 and and like have meetings just to, to dedicate for work we we are humans and we need that connection with each other so this is a challenging but it's also a need like behind it like it's more challenge to be the connections remotely but if you don't do that it doesn't work so it, it's extremely essential to do that and it's a tool and a challenge at the same time. So the other thing that is, is important for us to, to understand is the cultural difference. So, well, we have here, for instance, in Ireland, we have some some like uh, particular dates, festivals, things that make sense for Irish culture and the people living here that doesn't make any sense to people live in Brazil and doesn't make sense, sense for people live in India, for instance. I'm giving these examples because exactly the shape of my, my close team, like my short team. So what happened that we have some festivals in India that are quite important, like uh, uh, Diwali and, and some others. And they have in particular dates, they have particular ceremonies that is, is important. They have that day off 
and or they have that same thing in Brazil. There are some some particular dates that is like uh, uh, even inside Brazil, different regions they have different uh, dates uh, for the same religions. Like in in my city in Brazil, we have uh, uh, like a very traditional Saint John. They they celebrate so it's a cultural thing. We have typical food, typical things, and like if you have uh, something, some schedule, rigid schedule of work that you must be on that date. It might conflict with the cultural of your your colleagues, and you should be aware that you need to accommodate that. Otherwise, it will not work. Otherwise, like the people say, okay, I have the carnival in Brazil. Everyone, everything stops, and I, I will not be feel connected. So we should do it the other way. We should like celebrate all of this together and incorporate these these things, the the culture, the religious ceremonies. We need to understand also that, like for instance, uh, if you see a, a, a like a funeral in Brazil, it works in one way. Funeral here works in another way. There are different religions treated has different uh, uh, time timing pace around the this this process so you need to be aware that you need to listen to your colleagues you need to to understand how it works before think that oh yes well, but it's the right time to to move on and or it's the right time to to change uh to back to work or whatever so what i see on the on the overall how to deal with all of these challenges it will be if you are open to learn with your team and if you need to trust your team, you can accommodate all of this, even if you don't know, like uh, upfront, what are the, the nuances of the cultural of your, each member of your team. So it's important if you, you can, if you talk, you understand and they say, oh, yes, that's interesting. So how we can make it work, how we can make it better. And it make a huge difference for us. Like it's. It just the, the team, everyone feel welcomed and everyone feel accommodated uh, and listen. And it, it's really impactful. It's, it's, it's so good. So, so the advantage to have this, all of this, like the multi, multinational, multicultural team working remotely, is we have multiple perspectives for problem solving. So it's more painful because the people who challenge in your your like your certains. So you're oh yes, of course. To solve this, you use a and the people actually no, it doesn't work. Why not? And so the, it's not we have friction and the friction bring us to a better place, to a better, a better solution with these multiple perspectives. So it's something that if you see someone complaining that oh it's very tough to work with people different from, from yourself, like, wait, hold on. It's tough because it's, we challenge ourselves, but the, the output from that is, is absolutely incomparable. Like it's, you, if you're challenging yourself every day about what, what, what are they, what are you building? What, what you're building for whom? And you're gonna see things that, that you will not be able to see just you by yourself. So it's important, it's quite important to have and to give voice, give opportunity for your team to speak and contribute. So it's not good if you have a very diverse team and just one person speak, it, you're not getting the full potential of that. You're not activating that for, for, for the contribution, for the collective uh, uh, working on that. The other big advantage, the representativeness of the society. So if you're if you have your team on your colleagues, the a member from multiple nationalities, you you be on you be reflecting, you'll be understanding, uh, and you'll be creating products, creating creating uh, things that it's it's exactly like suits with the needs of, of the society. So that's that's priceless like it's is a must and the other thing is about inclusion so it's very it's very uh pleasant to to include people that out there are not 
and not to be included in other places. So it's it's really it's a, it's like a, it's very very delighting to have it on 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 your team and to to see that what you are doing is impacting uh, a life of other people and, and making a difference on that. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. That that's it. Like I did have a I think it was short call. Yeah. That's true. I think it was the time. It was the time. I think it okay. was mean to not be too long. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you so much. Um, while you were speaking, I was just taking note and thinking one thing that our CEO, Sanja Healy, always says is at Inclusio, we are trying to create workplaces where people want to work, help organizations create workplaces where people want to work. And in order to be able to bring your full self, like really reach your full potential. I think there's a responsibility um, to have the, the things um, that is needed for people to do that, whether it's in the design, whether it's in the culture and the leadership and the type of atmosphere we normalize. Um, all these things play a part in having the type of workplace um, where all people can, again, achieve their full potential. Um, so yeah, thank you. That was really insightful and I really enjoyed it. If anyone has any questions. Can I, can I ask Gabriella one? Yeah, sure. It's, it's like accessibility is, um, like I've, I've been hearing about accessibility for such a long time. And I think it's the extra effort that puts people off, isn't this? Uh, trying to convince your team why it's important, even I'm sure people who are there watching with us or watching in video when it goes up, when you post up your social stuff on social media with pictures, do you put your text in there? Because it doesn't come up by default. You have to click on it, then put in the text. I notice, like, you know, um, as on Twitter a lot, but as more people I notice on Mastodon, people explicitly say, can please people put um, your, your text on images and if you're doing hashtags make sure every single word is capitalized so people can read it as well um so i wonder even just that day-to-day -day stuff is hard how, how do you convince people in the company i suppose besides your personal day-to-day -day, trying to like putting out text but if you're working in a company and you're dealing with um stuff that goes in which is part of the design and where your clients will, customers will start using it or when people start using, how do you convince people that this is really important? Yeah, I think inside of the, we work at Inclusive, okay? So I, I would say that inside of the company, it's a little bit more easier, a little bit, okay? Not that much, but a little bit more easier because we are always, uh, I think the whole team, we are always open to educate. It's that exactly what I said as soon as I arrived. I'm not an expert here. I want to learn. And I think that's, I think that's the, the, the first mode inside of being open to learn, to understand a little bit more. For example, uh, I think a few months ago, I didn't use my pronouns to introduce me. And then I, I had a masterclass in, we have masterclass inside of the team, inside of the organization, once a month, like only for the team that we bring up anything. It can be a personal experience. It can be something that I work on. It can be something that I'm researching my free time or something. It's really like, it's a really safe space that we can bring. And then during this masterclass, I learned about like the importance and in introducing my pronouns. And then I was like, oh, oh my God, I don't do that. And in the first, I felt bad, do you know, like, oh my God, I work at Inclusive, like since always, I work here like for, since we are in DCU nearly four years ago, three and a half, and I didn't put my pronouns. But I think as, as soon as I, I had this stuff after I was like, yeah, but I will do that now. I think it's really uh, understand that we don't know everything. And like every single person here in this room can teach me something if I'm open to. So I think if you are in an environment that people are open to learn or to 
even to to open for for the conversation not really to op- to learn maybe not but open to have the conversation i think i think like things start to be a little bit easier because we don't need to have this convincement work do you know what i mean so i'm i will talk I will bring my perspective. I will bring maybe a research that I saw. I will share something. And then like I will kind of nudge the same as we do on the platform. A nudge, three minutes, two minutes in someone's brain. <laughs> and then like even if the person, in the beginning, the person, ah, I don't see, I don't see that. Why, why should I? But this is an information that we will be there. And then... As soon as I I think, like, when I heard about pronouns, I, I saw before in the LinkedIn everywhere, but I never really paid attention or I never really, like, stopped to read about it, what it's the importance and all this. But then as soon as I put, I started to see everyone, like, many people around me, around me doing the same. And I don't know if, like, I was the influencer there. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> But do you know this this feeling of, oh, it's a revolution. I, f- I think that's really the feeling. It's a revolution. And I want to be part of this. So maybe I'm not the, the influencer person that it's there, but I will always be bringing up something. Uh, it's interesting because I have someone in my team here, Ty, that uh, she knows how much I speak, how much I want to to, to talk and to, to have chats. And I think it's really these small chats, these small talks, bring up what I read or what I understand, what I think is important. And not only like in my professional life, but I would say in my day to day with my friends at the restaurant and with my family and and, and I think like trying something that I, I think I, I hear a lot from Sandra, uh, Sandra Healy. <laughs> so I hear a lot our CEO, it's don't judge people. If I start don't judging people or assuming something, I will not even feel scared or, un- or not having a lot, feel myself motivated to bring these things up. If I just, oh, someone made a comment or someone did something that wasn't like nice. So I feel, I, I try to don't judge the person, but I will put my point of view. And then I'm sure I will bring, I will put, plant something there. <laughs> and if the person allow, it's gonna grow and they will be watering this and this is gonna grow. But I would say that every time we have a conversation about any topic someone who never listened about at some point this person will start paying attention to this i'm not saying that this person will like google oh this 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 this. let me say about accessibility or about alt text or about these things but the person as soon as the person go to their social media and they see alt text hmm, alt text that's something i mentioned in the presentation or then go to the to a LinkedIn or something. And, mm, that's something Arthur has mentioned. Do you know what I mean? So I think the 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 most important thing here is open the conversation. It's giving people the opportunity to tell their stories, to bring up their perspectives, to, and be really like uh, free of judgmental thoughts. You know, like, for example, I never go to someone to educate the person. I don't think like I'm educating anyone. I'm educating myself every day. I'm learning from others. And that's what I always like to say. I'm not here to to be the expert. I'm not here to be the person who say like the truth. So I'm here to, to learn from you. I'm here to share what I've learned from others. What I've learned from someone in my team. What I've learned from Sandra Healy. So I think that's I think that's how I conduct so I don't feel that I'm like convincing or even trying to convince, but I feel that it's my, that it's, how can I say? I feel that it's like part of my, my job, part of my work to tell them what I learned. So I think that's, that's how I approach. <laughs> I think it should be like two minutes answering and then like 10 minutes. It's, it's, a, big, it's a big thing. It's a big thing because this, yeah. uh, this is a, um, an issue 
you know that's been for years and years and um and part of like you know especially people want to push out products very fast and you know this is always put on the last last you no know, nice to have nice to have I put in quotes you know oh it's you know it's a lot more work to put in you know say like a transcript for videos or um labels proper proper assessment mm-hmm. labels in in uh, your your buttons and everything like that and also making sure as you say the hover I didn't even know I did I didn't realize like the hover would be such a problem for people as well because it's such a thing like I've just saw today I've been a code um I just started today it's a coder thing that they do every year um uh, um uh, people participate but they had a, a thing where you sign up and there's like a hover over here to unsee this so because it's a secret thing right it's you hover over <laughs> here but like you know, I I I didn't think of it until you mentioned it now saying oh yeah how would someone who can't uh, you, exactly. you know, so, so that so, that's that that's a volunteer thing but as in in if you're working at a company that deals with a lot of kind of um interfaces for people to use you to bear in mind especially you're the designer and maybe you might have a UX person but you're like you are a designer plus UX plus all these other things you know and everything um, <laughs> everything <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah, that's so. So, th- so I, I did learn, learn that, learn a few things this evening from, you know, from both your talks actually. So, and it is, you know, normalizing the talk and educating yourself and not to try to preach. Yeah, I, I think it's I this. Was, sorry, after. Sorry, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it just. Uh, I think it's really about normalizing. That's the word, like normalizing the conversation. Mm-hmm. And not like feel oh I'm, oh my god I'm I'm so sorry I did it it's like okay I did it let's make it better next time let's make mm-hmm. it better in the next interaction let's mm-hmm. make it better like in the next feature I'm doing so and then trying to start putting it into your day to day at work and at everything you know so mm-hmm. I'm sorry yeah no you go ahead please. <laughs> No, I like to to suggest a challenge for each of you, like to to empathize with some of the one of the disabilities, like for instance, try to use the computer like after this call without the mouse, without the mouse pad, just just with the keyboard. That is one way of of understanding what kind of frustration the people feel. Try to 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 use some assistive technologies, like. With, for instance, like uh, screen readers, without without see the 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 screen, it's so it's so interesting experience, and it it'll be quite insightful, I'm sure. Any other questions? <laughs> people are shy. So um um. I just want to say, like, if people are really shy and don't, uh, you can type your questions into the chat as well. We can, we can also, you know, ask the questions and chat. The I think they may, maybe they are scared of asking. I, I'm staying here like a whole night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if if people don't want to ask the questions here, um, you can send on the questions to um, Dublin at womenucode.com, and I can pass them on um, yeah. to um Arthur Gabriella as well as Elizabeth you probably want to find out what Elizabeth does as well <laughs> you know yeah. and about Inclusio um but um but yeah um so while people are thinking if they want to ask questions or not I just put in a little thing there saying that if people are okay for me to take a picture of people's heads before mm-hmm. before the session wraps up please don't run away uh <laughs> <laughs> you can turn off your video and just have a head of thing there but it's fine i just want to take a picture it's more uh, so um just have i just think so we have a nice memory of everyone question. i think there mm-hmm. is one question i see now yeah i'm just wondering if there is a resource for irish sign language for coders um, Arthur? <laughs> i was i was I was researching for a uh, time ago about that, but I, I can't remember what tools there was there was available. But I, I, I it was a little challenging compared to the other language, uh, to to find some some of the tools, or uh, like in terms of of uh, translators for for this. But yeah, I I don't have a clear answer right now. Um, but there are there are some tools I I saw. Uh, some research around that, but I, I'm not sure what is available in terms of open source. But that's a good question. We're gonna find out. <laughs> I have another question. 
because that just cropped just that that just like triggered another one for me um again for for uh more accessibility side again um because i'm always curious about that uh so there's a lot of frameworks out there for like um you know, javascript and there's like css frameworks especially for people who just don't want to do everything from scratch um like bootstrap would be a very popular one like um how do you find those frameworks you know do you have to end up having to rework some of the stuff to make it more accessible or they're actually quite good accessibility wise you think from your own opinion like we are, we we use like uh, we use React in in our our, our tool. You know, like uh, we are basically implement. We are not using like uh, any an external tool to 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 do that. Uh, we have used it once in the in the website, uh, but after some migrations, um, I'm like in fairness, I don't. I'm not sure what we been using now. I would say that uh, there are still a lot of work to be done on that. I think there are still a lot of conversation to be put on the table. So I think this is something from my side. I can see that uh, I tried to mention this during the presentation, but sometimes I see the word going to, a, oh, let's make it simple. Let's, let's make it simple. Let's make it simple. As I mentioned, the, the form. So I always kind of, I have even like a, a funny meme <laughs> that I sent to my team that it's like uh, some people look at the, some tools, some websites to, to just find some like UI design, some more interactive thing. And then the accessibility like dying beside because people are trying to make things simple and not necessarily looking at accessibility so i think these events like this when we start the conversation it's really important and i think it should be like more and more um incentive say uh, mm -hmm. i forgot <laughs> when we like promote it yeah promote it because i think that we are in the beginning of this conversation and i can see that there are a lot to be done yet so that's exactly why i ask i put some do's and don'ts because i think if we start from somewhere we will start doing a small chance mm -hmm. inside of our small bubble would you be able to send on some resources i can share because uh, what i'll do is uh, for everyone here i'll i'll pop a post event message um, that's great after of this course. So if there's kind of information um, that um, uh, that might be useful uh, mm -hmm. for both the talks yeah. as well, any kind of resources, I'll pass them on. I think, uh, is there a comment down there by Rachel as well? Yeah, we're such a small country. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, okay. That's a nice comment. Um, so, um, so, so I suppose if there's, if we can't ask all the questions and get them answered uh, this evening, um, send them on to it and I will, see if uh, Arthur and Gabrielle can send on some resources and we'll pass them on to, to folks on the, the subject matter that they were talking about this evening. Um, so um, anything else? Yeah, is so that... just something I'm, I'm yeah. reading here. Uh, Rachel, sorry, yeah. am I mentioning your name right, Rachel? Uh, we are such a small country, but my mom is 90% deaf and really relies heavily on subtitles which are often wrong or unavailable so it's on my mind thank you yeah uh, i think it's it's very interesting as she mentioned her mom is like 90 percent deaf and i think this is something that we are we are really not aware of many of this part of the society that it's not a hundred percent deaf it's 90 percent it's 10 percent it's 50 percent so i know that uh for for uh, uh, blind people there is the same so i think for it's even more challenge if we don't have because like some for let's say for 100 percent deaf the person that's deaf they might know they might learn at schools or whatever sign of language but then the person who is not like 100% didn't have this opportunity at school to learn sign language, for example, or, or with the family or to, to provide this. So this, if we don't have 
the, for example, the subtitles, it's gonna make it very hard. We may we may achieve this person if we have, for example, the 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 person who is translating the sign the sign language. But if we don't have the subtitle, for example, we may not achieve the person that doesn't go doesn't know the sign language. If you know what I mean. So it's just like it's as much accessible we do, more we will reach people. Does it make sense? In Brazil, it's also the the most common is, is the other way. Like the people know the sign language, but they don't they don't like read and like it's really it's really tough because the people oh yes they have they have their the subtitles they can read, but it's not like it's not accessible. It's not yeah. fluent. It's so not... it's always about I think it's always about improving, adding, reading more, looking for more things because we will make uh, different uh, needs, we will kind of uh, solve different needs for people. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, but I think it's really the beginning of the conversation. I'm delighted to be here, kind of uh, having this conversation with you. Uh, just a, a pen, a, a kind of um, a pen on uh, your ads, in, what you're saying to Rachel there. Uh, so hi, Rachel. Um, I know um, Python Ireland's um, uh, Python conferences. I think they, I think they did have um, uh, signers at their uh, conference. In the, I will, I will look. I will contact them and see. It's. Uh, I definitely know that they have someone doing um, the the the, the trans transcripts. I will double check if they have someone signing. If not, um, I'm I'm think there were conferences in the past. I have to dig it up which ones I've seen people signing. Uh, if not, I will I will dig around and ask anyway. Um, because I definitely know a very long time ago a conference called UltraConf. They definitely have someone who did that. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll I have it on my I have a little to do, have a to do there, and I'll check that up, uh, Rachel, and uh, I'll let you know the <laughs> message if I got if I found someone or not. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for your input. Um, so if people don't mind, I think I I worry at the time. If people don't mind, if I can just switch to. to um, Hello, everyone. <laughs> if I can take a quick picture of everyone, um, I don't know. Um, so, uh, most so I'm gonna just uh, count down, I suppose, if it's okay with everyone. So, um, if I can press one, five, four, three, two, one. There you go. Thanks, everyone, and I will pass that on to the, the team as well. Uh, it's a nice little memory for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, Again, um, I, I, Elizabeth, do you want to have say a few words before I close? Uh, yeah, I want to say thank you to everyone for listening. Thank you to Gabby. Um, I know this is something you're very passionate about. Thank you so much, Arthur, because I learned a lot. Um, and thank you to you, Vicky. Um, we hope to have more uh, of these types of events. Um, I'd also like to share with you all today um, that if you're interested in learning more about Inclusio and what we do and even finding out how and if you'd like to be a part of what we do, um, please don't be, don't hesitate to contact us and we would love to share information. We'd love to have conversations with you and see how we can help. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Gabby. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Arthur. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to say thank you again on behalf of Women in Code to um, everyone who joined us this evening. Um, um, just as, uh, yes, if you want to stay in contact with us as well, um, we're women in, uh, Dublin um, at womenincode.com, but we're on Twitter as well. www.codedublin um, is our Twitter handle. And um, this video will be up on the YouTube channel. Um, the, the, uh, it's Women Who Code, um, their main YouTube channel, if you do a search on, on YouTube. Um, I will um, let folks know. I will tweet it out once I find out when the video goes up. I will let everyone know. But in the meantime, I will um, gather the information and a post-event message from our speakers uh, here. And if there's any questions, drop them over. Um, I'll send them out, uh, say, um, this is Thursday already. So give me a week for everyone to gather all stuff. And, and and I'll post out the message next week if that's okay with everyone. And with that, I will say thank you and I'll pause recording and we can all relax a little bit. Give me a second. <laughs>